If you think about it, it's kind of crazy how much we can do with our smartphones nowadays. This tiny little package is like six devices all rolled into one. And with the hardware getting better and better each year, the list of things we can do with our phones only grows longer. 15 years ago, back when the first iPhone was introduced, I think very few people could predict where we would be today. Who could imagine that one day phones would have a LiDAR scanner that could be used in all sorts of ways, including scanning real-world objects and converting them to 3D right on the device. I've been thinking about all this quite a bit lately, especially once I started experimenting with the new iPhone 14 Pro, which is an incredibly capable device. I got my iPhone a month or so ago, and since then I've been testing out how far I can push the device, especially when it comes to 3D asset creation. Is the LiDAR scanner any good? Can we take good enough pictures for photogrammetry? Or how about Apple's other 3D tools like RoomPlan? That's what I've been playing with the past few weeks, and that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. Let's go! LiDAR is easily the most fun way to create 3D objects. Part of the appeal is the fact that the results are immediate. We can go from a scan to 3D object in a matter of minutes. It's a really fast process and something that Apple has clearly optimized its hardware for. The other part is the very helpful feedback we get as we're scanning an object. We can clearly see which parts are left to scan, so by the end of the process we're not left with missing pieces. So creating a 3D object through this method is a very satisfying experience. At the same time though, it's also the least capable system in our 3D toolset. At least when it comes to detail in geometry and texture. Of course, that's to be expected. The iPhone's LiDAR scanner cannot compete with dedicated hardware that costs tens of thousands of dollars. Not to mention that the LiDAR scanner on Apple's devices was never really meant for 3D asset creation. The sensor was built to help with Apple's AR vision, like adding a virtual object onto a real-world surface, and making sure that this 3D object is tracked correctly onto the scene. So for this type of use, Apple's LiDAR scanner is more than enough. Now let's see what kind of detail we can get. And we're gonna start with this staircase here. First off, what I absolutely love is the fact that we're working with real-world dimensions. Things are not accurate to the millimeter, but the dimensions of the object are very close to the real thing. Which makes scene blocking extremely easy. This figure, for example, is 1.8 meters in height, and it already fits pretty well into this scene. Now, how about mesh detail? At a glance, the results are decent. There's enough detail there to describe the object, but it's not enough for a final asset. If we disable the texture, we can see all sorts of deformations and issues. For example, the railing of the staircase has a lot of visual jaggies. For some reason, it didn't manage to capture the right angles of the railing. The gate at the end of the staircase is also not captured completely. The parts that make up the gate are not particularly thin, so I was expecting that the iPhone would be able to grab all the necessary data, but this might have been an error on my part. We do see though these issues on other parts of the scan, so I think we might very well be hitting the limitations of iPhone's LiDAR scanner. Let's take as an example this step at the beginning of the staircase. In the model, it looks like it's leveled to the sidewalk, but in actuality, there is some height difference there. The same applies to the tube that goes around the staircase. Parts of it kinda register, but the tube is mostly visible on the texture and not the geometry. My bigger issue though has to do with the fact that the hard architectural surfaces are not really maintained. There's a lot of variance and deformation there, especially on elements that should be relatively level. The other issue has to do with the clarity of the texture. Some parts are more defined than others, but we're still not getting the resolution needed for a close-up shot. And in some parts, the texture information is missing completely. But in all fairness, I think this latter part is more of a user error with me going too fast through the scanning process. These issues in geometry and texturing can be seen in other scans. 
Let's take as an example this tree trunk here. There is a small patch where the texture looks high resolution, but then the rest of the texture looks very blurry. And if we rotate to the other side, there's a patch that is even more low res. I'm still trying to figure out the best practices for capturing the texture information. I've tried going very close to the surface and slowly grabbing the texture, but from my initial tests I didn't notice any difference. Now let's go ahead and check the geometry. The density of the mesh is relatively okay, but this type of density information is not enough for asset creation. But for Apple's use case scenarios, this level of geometry is more than enough. Despite though all these issues, I still had a blast scanning with LiDAR. It might not be the best for asset creation, but for quick sketches and to quickly figure out things in a production environment, I think it's absolutely wonderful. Now let's see how things look with photogrammetry. With the latest sensor advancements on the iPhone 14 Pro, I would say Apple's phone is a great tool for photogrammetry, especially if you don't want to go the traditional route, buying a camera, lenses, and other accessories like polarizing filters. I will personally still use my camera for 3D asset creation, but if I'm in a location where I only have my phone with me, I will not hesitate to take the necessary pictures with it. Especially when there's good lighting, we can get some great results out of it. This rock was captured from 78 pictures. The level of detail is quite high, and the great thing is that there's no limit in the amount of detail we can capture. We can go as high as we want, I just chose to stop at 78 pictures. If I disable the texture, we can clearly see how detailed the mesh is. There are parts that are not well defined, but that's me being lazy, it has nothing to do with the phone. Now let's compare photogrammetry to LiDAR. As you can see, the differences are immense. With photogrammetry, we can go to this next level of detail. Given some time, we can capture every single nook and cranny. It took me around 8 minutes to capture these 78 images. With LiDAR, I was done in less than 2 minutes, 1 minute and 25 seconds to be exact. So there's always a trade-off, we can get insane quality but at a slow pace, or we can get something almost immediately but at a lower resolution. Now let's check another rock that was captured with photogrammetry. As before, the level of detail is quite high. All the different surfaces and details of the rock are clearly captured, it's really awesome to see. The texture is also well defined because it's taken from several 12 megapixel images. So the sensor resolution is not really important here, if we take lots of pictures, we will capture all the necessary detail even with this tiny low resolution sensor. Now let's see how LiDAR stacks up. As expected, the difference is immense, but that doesn't invalidate LiDAR at all, it just means that different use cases will require different solutions. For asset creation, for example, I would only use photogrammetry, but for testing purposes or solving production issues, LiDAR is absolutely perfect. Before we move on to room plan, let me give you a couple of tips when shooting images with the iPhone. This applies to iPhone photography in general, but it's even more important when shooting images for 3D assets. Always, always, always use RAW. Do not rely on Apple's default high efficiency format. There's so much sharpening, noise reduction, and aggressive post-processing happening that the assets that will come out of it will just look wrong. Here's one of the images of the captured rock in RAW, and here's the high efficiency equivalent. Highlight allows us to capture both formats at the same time, so I'm not simulating how the high efficiency format looks like, it's the real deal. As you can see, the RAW format looks clean and natural. The high efficiency format, on the other hand, looks like the result of a first year design student that went nuts with Photoshop's filters. There's no comparison, really. The other benefit of using the RAW format is that it holds enough information for us to balance out the shadows and highlights, which is especially important for a clean and balanced texture. A few months ago, Apple introduced a whole new SDK called Room Plan. It uses every single part of the phone to scan a room and produces a 3D file out of it. LiDAR scanner, cameras, accelerometer, they're all put into use. Once the scan is complete, 
The phone spits out a file that contains the layout of the room and the placement of all the furniture in that room. This 3D file is especially useful in architecture and decoration, but even more so in a pre-production environment. For example, with the 3D file at hand, it's easy to figure out the placement of the lights or to even block out scenes without too much effort. And I must say, room plan delivers. I managed to scan my apartment with relative ease. I don't think it took me more than 4 or 5 minutes. The layout and the placement of the furniture is spot on. There are some issues here and there, but it's nothing that can't be adjusted easily. For example, this bench here goes all the way to the wall. Or the computer desk is much longer than what is actually shown. There are also some furniture missing, like a small cabinet here, but in another scan it does show up. So I think that if you want an absolutely accurate reproduction of the real thing, you need to be a little bit more careful as you're scanning the room. But for me, these are negligible issues. I'm more interested about the dimensions and how closely they match the real world environment. And that's where things are a little bit off. It's close, but not as close as I would have liked. For example, this little bit of wall measures 8 centimeters in the 3D file, but it's actually 20 centimeters in real life. In other cases, things are not that far off. For example, this section here measures 3 meters and 13 centimeters in real life. And in the 3D file, it's 3 meters and 2 centimeters. So, if your aim is to use the file as a close reference for interior decoration, it's probably not the best idea, but as a rough guide, I think it's absolutely wonderful. I still want to experiment more to see if I could get much closer to the real thing by adjusting the way I scan the space, but I think no matter how I do things, I won't be able to achieve 100% accuracy. What is worth noting here is that the 3D file that Polycam spits out is not to the same specifications as Apple's demos. In the demos, all the objects and the walls come as separate objects, so it's easy to move things around. But with Polycam, it all comes as one big object, which is not ideal at all. Certainly something for the Polycam developers to fix. I'm still amazed by how much we can do with a phone. Things that 15 years ago would sound like something coming out of a Star Trek episode. When it comes to 3D asset creation, photogrammetry is still the king. The iPhone is capable enough to shoot high-res photos and with Apple's SDK we can easily get a very detailed object out of them. We still need a desktop for the final part of the process, but just the fact that we can use our phone to create high-quality assets is just mind-blowing. As far as LiDAR goes, it's perfect for what Apple aims to do with it, which is mainly enhancing the AR experience. But for asset creation, the objects produced are more for distant elements in the background rather than anything else. As a pre-production tool though, LiDAR scanning is excellent. So if you're a director or technical director, LiDAR scanning can be a great help. You can get all the major shapes of the environment with some degree of accuracy and with relative ease. Would it be great if we could have a more powerful LiDAR scanner? <laughs> sure, but that would mean that the phone would have to cost four or more times than what it actually costs now. So I perfectly understand Apple not wanting to cater to this super niche audience. If you have access to any of Apple's latest phones and you're into 3D, I would highly encourage you to experiment more with it. You will be surprised by the kind of quality you can get out of it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.